Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Nightly Sports Call. All right, Ken, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Nightly Sports Call on the Borders and Borders Hotline. It's 412-575-2600. That is the number to call, and we have always a lot to talk about. You can also tweet our program tonight at KD Pomp, at Gene Collier, and the outstanding columnist from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette is back from Cleveland. And that's our first topic tonight. The Steelers win one of those play down to the competition kind of games in which they were sloppy. But in previous years, they've lost a lot of games in which they've been sloppy. Yesterday, they won the game, which is the most important thing. That's why you go there to get a win, especially against a team like that. And to me, that's been one of the themes of this season. Don't lose to teams you're not supposed to lose to, which has happened the last several years. So that at least is a step in the right direction. But Gene Collier, let me bring you in and ask you about the performances of specifically guys like Le'Veon Bell or Martavis Bryant or the offense in general. And do you at all equate it to a lack of repetition in training camp? Oh, sure. I think that was very evident, Bob. Uh, uh, Le'Veon Bell, uh, out of sync, no timing. No recognition of uh, you know holes when they did present themselves. Offensive line a little hesitant in front of him. Uh, all those things were at work, and you, you knew they were going to be at work because he was not obviously not going to come in, you know, until the very end. Um, so he was benefited from opening at Cleveland, uh, obviously. But uh, I think you're right about uh, you know getting the win. This isn't um, this isn't college football. All you need to do is win. Um, you know, you're not playing Akron out there to believe at that point. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. Penn State is one and one under James Franklin playing Akron, just for the record. <laughs> just for the record. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody should be upset about anything that happened there in Cleveland. I think they got some great performances, one of which was by T.J. Watt, obviously. And, and mm. uh, all those backup uh, defensive linemen who helped out when Tua went out, they, they had a great game, and their outside linebackers had a great game. Um, you know, they did enough to win, and Antonio Brown, that's why he gets the big bucks. He was the best player out there, and, yeah. and normally when you look at the quarterback-wide receiver combination, I always think it's quarterback who makes the receivers look good, and generally that's true, but on this particular day, it was vice versa. It was, I don't think Roethlisberger was as sharp as he wanted to be, and I think it showed at some of those bubble pass, screen passes, but Antonio Brown was outstanding. When you consider 11 targets, 11 receptions, that's, you very seldom see that. Gene, and you also see 182 yards with, you know, a 15-yard catch that was nullified by penalty. I think it was 15 yards, and then there was a pass interference call for 41 yards. If you add all those totals together, he's up over 250 yards. Yeah, and Jeff Starkey did a good column on Antonio Brown today in our paper, and pointed out that what he had was the equivalent of a wide receiver perfect game. That's he was that good. He really was. Now the good news today, as opposed to last night when we joined you here on this program, is that Stefan Tuitt looks like he won't miss the rest of the season, uh, according to a lot of national reports out there that came out. It looked like that's the destination it was headed to. But today, Cam Hayward, who started his day by tweeting fake news, and you knew something was up, and then in the locker room opportunity we had today with him, he admitted that uh, to it should be back. And certainly that's good news. And Gene, when you consider, to your point about T.J. Watt, uh, he had two sacks. Anthony Ciccolo, backup linebacker, had two sacks. They had seven sacks. And when you consider there was no Bud Dupree, there was essentially no Stephon to it, and James Harrison was hardly on the field, that's pretty good work. Really good work. And, you know, the, the Steelers had eight sacks at Cleveland last November. 24% of the sacks they got last season, they got it one day in Cleveland last year. Then they compounded it with seven in the opener this year. I mean, they love to play up there. And those, those 15 sacks are by nine different players. But uh, you're right, Chicolo had a great game. Wasn't supposed to play, obviously. Uh, Watt had a great game. Uh, Joe Hayden knows what to do when you come out of the opposite locker room, sack the court. <laughs> yes, he did. He almost had an interception, too. Yeah. Uh, baseball news, the Pirates uh, winning tonight, although they had lost five in a row, and they're pretty much nondescript. They've fallen apart. Stephen Brault, the good news tonight, six shutout innings in that game. Andrew McCutcher with a home run. Uh, and the Cleveland Indians, which they're now the Windians because they keep putting W's ahead of the I-N-D-I-A-N-S, yeah. and that's their Twitter handle, and that's clever. And I liked it when I saw it. Now they keep adding every day, Gene. They started, you know, it was 9, 10. Now it's up to 19 games in a row. I don't know that it's a final yet, but they were up 11 to nothing on Detroit. Terry Francona and his team are doing something that, to me, the only thing I compare it to is what Clint Hurdle's uh, Colorado Rockies did back in whatever year that was, 2000. 2007. 
Is that what it was, 2007? Okay, but the point is, that's 19 is Moneyball back in Oakland, yeah, 2002, and it may go beyond record, that. Right? Yeah, 20 is the record. How about yeah, that? They've been tremendous. I, you know, I hadn't. Are they peaking too soon? <laughs> they probably are. Uh, I hadn't realized that the Indians were home this weekend. I, I could have been talked into going to see that Sunday night baseball game, especially after having won 17 in a row, and here we are at 19. Good, good for them. Good for them. All right, we're going to take your calls. It's 412-575-2600. Back with that and much more on the nightly sports call, the Board of Supporters Hotline right here on Pittsburgh CW.